The biggest barrier to you focusing on you has very little, if nothing, to do with anybody else. That's right. The people that you believe are getting in the way of your self-care and your true inner healing journey have nothing to do with why you're actually not devoting that intentional time towards yourself. You know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. As a matter of fact, that's probably why you came here. You came here to know what it is that's getting in the way of you focusing on you. And it is one simple word. Drum roll, please. Guilt. That's right. The reason why you are not committing that time to yourself, focusing on self, putting yourself first, putting your mask on first, filling up your cup to the, well, this ain't the brim, but filling up your cup to the brim. The reason for that is you feel guilty for doing so because you have been programmed into believing that it is better to give than to receive. You have been programmed into believing that sharing is caring. And nobody ever taught you that receiving is a part of the giving process. Nobody ever told you that receiving is just as important as giving. And if you don't know how to receive, you will only become resentful, bitter, and hate-filled as your life progresses. That's right. I know. Trust me. I got got a, a copy of the Bible right there. I've read it time and time again, and it has been misinterpreted, and it has been read to you in ways to use and manipulate the individuals who are listening. And I'm not even going to put it on the deacon, the pastor, or anybody who might have mistranslated that Bible right there, that book right there, whatever your specific book is. I'm going to put the onus on you, because if I put it on anybody else, that means you are powerless. And I know that you are the furthest thing from powerless. As a matter of fact, you are made in the image and likeness of your creator, which is all powerful. Therefore, you are powerful. However, as soon as you start blaming, as, you, as soon as you start uh, placing uh, all kinds of situations and circumstances in everybody else's hands, they did it. It's because of them. I can't move forward because of that person, my ex, my exes. Whoever it is that you are pointing at, you are giving your power to. And so you have to come to the point where you realize that this is you dealing with you. That is right. It is you and you. And you might have never gotten this type of message before. I am not your grandmama's deacon. I'm not your granddaddy's dating coach. I don't even know if they had those back in the day. I'm just a realist. I'm somebody who came to give you a dose of the truth. And that's all I got for you. I'm not going to tell you anything besides the gospel truth. And that is your life right now is a reflection and a manifestation of your beliefs about yourself. Let me repeat that. Your life right here, right now is a manifestation and a reflection about your belief about yourself or your beliefs about yourself. Now they may be quote unquote subconscious beliefs, which means you're not trying to look at them, right? You're paying no attention to them. However, those beliefs that you hold about yourself, those ways in which you talk to yourself, that internal dialogue that you continue forward with, those thoughts and emotions that you continue to entertain, that you become so used to, so comfortable with, that you've internalized over time, those are the creators of your reality. And so you have now seen a manifestation of a world that is based upon that internal dialogue. And a part, a huge part of that is you become a people pleaser. You believe that you have no self-worth, that your job in this world, your job in this life is to completely neglect yourself, to abandon yourself wholeheartedly and to pick up everybody else's problems. And you might believe, again, it's because of them, right? It's If they didn't have so many problems, I wouldn't have so many problems to solve. No, 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 sweetheart. No, 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 bro, bro. The reason why you're doing so is because you are gaining a sense of validation from being that so-called fixer, that so-called savior, that martyrdom syndrome that you're carrying forward that's become your identity is nothing more than a way for you to get external validation because you forgot who you were. And so your life looks like a life of powerlessness. You literally feel powerless. You, You call yourself an empath, but in reality... It's simply that you take on the emotions of anybody around you instead of guarding your emotions, instead of being in control and in charge of your emotions, which is the power that has been given unto you. You make everybody else responsible for your happiness. You say that people don't appreciate me for all the things I do. But then when you're telling people why you do things, you say, you know, I just wanted to do something nice for them or 
It's from the goodness of my heart. Like, do you see these contradictions? I'm again, I'm here having a real life conversation with you. A while back, I made a decision. I'm only going to have real conversations. If I'm going to turn this camera on right here, I am going to have the type of conversations you would have with your old uncle or your old auntie, the one who has been through some things and the one who is not going to cap. They're not going to tell you the things that you want to hear. They're going to tell you everything that you need to hear. And that truth is, number one, the most important is you are powerful, but you are giving that power away. And the way in which you are doing it is you are falling into those habits of guilt. Right over time, maybe programming to you as a child was just this habit of always feeling guilty, always feeling like I'm in trouble. If I did something bad or I'm not good enough, I need to be a good person in order for people to accept me. Whatever your narrative was, you were holding on to that and it is stopping you from living a life of freedom. And the only reason I know this is because I am talking to myself. This is a mirror. This is a reflective conversation. This is me and me. I can look at me in the computer right here. That's me. I was the individual living from that state of consciousness. I was the one who was living for everybody else's quote unquote happiness in order for them to hopefully return the favor one day. But I wouldn't say that out loud. You know, I was doing it because I wanted to help. And, you know, my mission is just for everybody else and not myself. Like, I'll be honest right here, right now. Like the reason I'm doing this is because I get so much gratification from it. Whether you change or not, that's your business. I can't change you. And it's not my job to save you. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to tell you the truth. And for me, I get a sense of invigoration and liberation doing what I do. But I'm not responsible for anybody else. And I'm doing it for me at the end of the day. And it serves you so beautiful. It serves both parties, right? When YouTube starts to pay up with the ad dollars, beautiful. It's serving in a monetary value and in multitudes, right? It's giving the purpose. It's giving me uh, the feeling of, of worthiness, of validation, of using my gifts and my talents, monetary, etc. But that's still for me. But before it used to be, I have to do this in order to change people, to fix people. And if people didn't get results, if people didn't change because of the things that I was doing, the words that I was saying, the, the truth that I was hopefully imputing, which was usually not fully truth because I was afraid that if I told the whole truth and nothing but the truth, then I might get ridicule and criticism. And that's far from what any people pleaser would want. That's very far from what any people pleaser would would want in this life, at least. I mean, uh, when I think about it, a uh, people pleaser is an individual who does everything to please others, which means self-sacrifice, which means giving up one's own authenticity, which means neglecting oneself completely and absolutely in most cases, faking it, wearing the masks, being a phony, whatever we want to call it. And I'm not saying this as a projection of some type of, you know, shaming ritual, or whatever. No, this ain't got nothing to do with shame. It's got to do with personal responsibility, your ability to respond. You are not a reactor. You have only been programmed into and believe that you're a reactor. And so you believe that everything is happening to you. But in reality, you are responsible. You have the ability to respond to life. You have the ability to act upon life. And the only way you do so is allowing yourself to let go of that guilt. And the guilt only stays because you allow it to stay. You've been so used to feeling that sensation of guilt. It's become like a chemical dependency, a drug. It's become your crack cocaine, right? And so in order for you, again, to strip the power away from whatever you've been given power to in your external world and in order to take that power back, and you're not really taking it back to be honest with you. What you're doing is claiming, what you're doing is standing in, what you're doing is reinstating or reinforcing the power that's already been, and you're standing in it. And it seems as simple as taking some me time. It seems as simple as the first 30 minutes of the day, first 50 minutes a day. I'm not just gonna rush out to this job that I don't even really wanna be at anyway. No, I'm gonna take some time and meditate. I'm gonna take some time and reflect. Like I'm gonna take some time for me right now. This ain't got nothing to do with anybody around me. This is me and me. And again, I said, I ain't your grandmama's deacon because your grandmama's deacon is going to tell you that the love of self is the root of whatever. And I'm not here for that. I'm not here for them phony messages. I'm here to tell you, if you don't got love for yourself, you don't got love for anybody else, period. Oh, but where, where does God come in? That's where God comes in. God said, love yourself, right? As you love others, love others as you love yourself. For anybody who wants to get religious on me, boom, there you go. You can go read it for yourself. 
And if that offends you, then you're offended by love. You're offended by nurturing and caring for yourself. Because again, you have been convinced that it is moral, that it is of the higher ground, that it makes you a better person to neglect oneself, to deny your own internal needs. Your own emotions come second to everybody else's and you wonder why you're so resentful, why you're so bitter, why you're so angry at life. It's because you're not living in truth. You're not living authentically. You're not living in reality. You're living in everybody else's creation of what they think you should be or what they want you to be in order for them to feel some type of way. They're not taking responsibility for their happiness, so they're going to put it on you just like you put it on them. And it's going to be this endless cycle where nobody is truly fulfilled, nobody's truly satisfied, and everybody is miserable when it's all said and done. And if you are done with that cycle, then it's time to make a decision to step out. It's as simple as making a decision to say, you know what, I'm not going to drink anymore. Oh, it sounds so crazy, but it's a chemical dependency. It's a, look, I was a drug addict from the age of 14 to the age of 19, and I stepped out of it completely. And I'm not a superhero. I'm not somebody who's more special than the next. I am just me. But I made a decision that this isn't leading to the life that I want. And I left it all. I saw the environment around me. I said, this isn't what I believe I am. And the identity shifted. And so you could make a decision that would change your entire life in a moment, in an instant. But so long as you continue to hold on to this belief that you got to please everybody and you got to put everybody first and you got to sacrifice yourself like that's what love. No, love ain't sacrificing yourself for a damn body. That's not what love is. Love is hoping the very best for everybody around you. That's what love is. Love is hoping and wishing and desiring the very highest good for everybody, including yourself. Your love is unfulfilled if it does not include you. That's my message for today. That's the gospel truth. Now, for anybody who wants to work with me personally, I'll be honest with you, I am taking a handful of clients right now one-on-one. -on -one. So make sure to click the link in the description below. And it's going to take you through a questionnaire. I'm not just, again, I can't just work with anybody. Some folk, they don't really want the change. They are tired kickers, right? They're just interested. But some folk are really devoted. And so I want to work with those individuals who have been people pleasers and codependents and, you know, quote-unquote empaths and looking to step into that personal power. So if that is you, make sure to book your one-on-one uh, your -on -one consultation, at least the first in a multitude. Now, if you're looking to join my group program, that's something different. You're going to have to watch a webinar. You're going to have to go completely through that educational experience. At the end, you'll have an opportunity to book a call, a breakthrough call, where we will see if we're a match for one another, if the program is right for you, and if you're a right fit for the program. So that being said, I love you guys. Appreciate you. Deuces.